What's good, people? This is Demo, the producer of the Chop by T podcast. Before we start this week's episode, I'm here to tell you that the Chop by T podcast merch shop is open for business. We've got t-shirts, hoodies, windbreakers, trucker hats, and even socks for your feet. Head over to chopbyteapodcast.com or click the link in the description below. And now, enjoy the show. What's up? What up, what up, what up? Um, I want to jump right into it. Uh, okay. First question. Question. First question. First thing first. Okay. How are you feeling? Feeling great, brother. I need more than great. How are you feeling? feeling awesome. Man? Great. What they say. Blessed and highly favored. Uh, this moment, uh, this moment, this time that you're existing in right now. Like, how do you feel? Because you could say great. Great right. is a general blanket statement, but right. how do you feel right now? To be honest, man, it's the best I done felt in my whole life. Talk to me. It's like I'm finally operating in my purpose, man. It's like I get that. If you know, but you know, I always use sports analogies and shit like that. I feel like I'm on that field again. Like, like, like when I played football, I felt like I was just thriving in my purpose like this is what i'm gonna do for the rest of my life this is it and, you know now since we've been having all this going on the podcast things is rolling you know people telling me you know i'm doing great like i just feel awesome man like i'm just so glad i'm operating my purpose i feel like i know where i'm headed now i don't feel i don't feel lost anymore it was it was a time i used to look in the mirror look at myself and just didn't know who i was looking at Cause I was lost, seeking validation. Did that time come out the football? Yeah, yeah, I was lost. I was lost from listen from after I graduated, all through college, up until goddamn now, actually. Yeah, shit, that's well over ten years. Yeah, just just not knowing. It's it's it sucks not knowing what you what your purpose is, and just not knowing where you headed. Right. I feel like I I got a destination now. I know where I'm going. So I guess, all right, with you not knowing where you were or who you were or what did you what you wanted in those years, did did in turn did it turn into like you doing things or things you would deem negative or things that you regret now? Yeah, I was uh, I was putting things and people before myself. I, I found myself smoking weed all the time. Found myself putting certain people ahead of me that I shouldn't even had in my life for real. Or should have just been there for a season. And I was just hanging on, you know, because I'm seeking validation just in them because I didn't know myself. Yeah. And in the moments in those years from about 18 to uh, shit now, you being 30, um, right at 12 years, maybe even over 12 years. Uh, what moment did you have, or or moments did you have that uh, specifically mm. that changed the course of your life forever, or that changed the way you see things or view things forever? If you had to give one or two, or just one, uh, just one here recently when we did our live show, we did our live show. At first, like we both were, we was nervous as hell, but it was like when we got on that stage, it was a sense of calmness, like. At that moment, oh, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Nothing else matters. This this is what you're supposed to be doing. What about something that affected you negatively? Oh, uh, something that affected me negatively. Just overindulging in relationships that I shouldn't have been indulging in for long periods of time. Talk about it. Certain friends. Uh, just... You know how you know you're supposed to be uh, cutting somebody off, but dealing with them, I feel like they needed me because you know, I wasn't loving myself. I I wasn't taking time out to love myself, so I was I was putting that into them instead of you know putting all that into me. And it's just I was just 
just losing myself, just trying to, you know, deal with these people. So is it fair to say that you found negative, um, you found uh, negative behavior uh, to be something that really brought you into your purpose or things that you that most would deem negative that made you or gathered you or made you whole? Did they make you whole in the moment? This is basically what I'm trying to say. Just, you know, dealing with those things, just, it pushed me to where I am today. Right, right. So I guess um, what I was trying to pull from you or ask from you in the moments, because you tend to do that. I've been knowing you for a while now. You give a lot of blanket statements uh -huh. or whatever when you speak. And then when you speak, I think that stems from your ability or your want to be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. You know, you never want to like hurt people yeah. or make things whatever. But I just want to let you know, like now while we doing this, mm -hmm. this is a chance for the people watching to know who you are and give your testimony and how do you feel. And, you know, if we got to ruffle some feathers right now, I definitely want to do that. I don't mind because that's your story. You know what I mean? Okay. So you don't have to get blanket statements when we speak about things because that's your story. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um. So you living in your purpose now. You found out who you are. and But now you're in a situation where you know who you are. Is that is it fear there? Uh, the fears, no, I don't have no fear at all. So no fear of what we doing failing or uh, any of that. I, I have no doubt that we we gonna succeed in this. I'm well, I'm fearful of what uh, of the people that how it's gonna affect the people around us. I'm, I'm scared they may change with our success. Talk about it. like I'm scared that like you know you know how they always say. People change when they get success or they get money and stuff like that. But I always say it's the people around them. I don't want people that I'm close to to like to switch up on me just because I might have to tell them no, and they know I got it. You know, because this this you always hear that. You always hear that like people was rocking with me until I started telling them no, and I, I'm I'm fearful of that. I'm fearful of this being people that I really love, and I'm fearful of like having to leave certain people up behind still, and I know it's coming. I know it's coming. What are the signs? What do you see to let you know that's coming? Just, I want to say it's, it's signs. It's just operating in and now and just seeing it. Like, I know I'm going to leave you behind because you're just not on my, you're not on my trajectory. The vibration is not the same. Yeah, it's not, it's not the same at all. Like, it's just, it, it's not even going to be like on no bad terms. It's just, I'm just going to leave you behind because I'm on better and bigger shit. Yeah, I think uh, we talk about this often that it's important to um, to reevaluate your circle every now and then and the people that you're around. Uh, some of those people that you said you should have left behind in the past, do you still deal with them to this day in some capacity? Oh, uh, yeah, but it's like it's limited. Yeah, and it's like it's like life removing. You no, know? like it's like one of my partners. He's supposed to be here. Right now, he's supposed to be damn near doing this with us, but he, you know, he in jail. He locked up, and that's, that's like my right hand man. And I see, I can't keep dealing with him. It's, you know, I see him going down a certain road that I just can't be a part of. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna derail me off my journey if I keep dealing with him. How does that make you feel though? Because you love this person, right? You're not the type to not love. It's. it's it's sad. It's depressing sometimes, honestly. Yeah. It's very sad. Like, it's somebody that I love dearly. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the hardest part is going to be, I guess, letting that person know. And yeah, Well, you said they removed themselves. Well, life removed them. Life yeah. removed them. Yeah. So, I guess the hardest part is, like, accepting the fact that you love something in that moment. That's what you loved in that moment. Right? And... You can only remember that moment, but the space that you're in now, you can no longer love that person. I can only love the memories that we made. Exactly. Just got to keep moving. And it, it's not to say they might not get on the right track, but they're not on the right track right now, so I got to leave them behind. Yeah, yeah. In your life as a whole, not even just the last 12 years, the single most fucked up moment, the thing that changed you and defined you forever. Take your time. The most fucked up thing that's changed me forever. Yeah, that defined you, defined who you are today, the Roscoe, because um, I've known you mm -hmm. for a long time. The Roscoe that I seen in middle school wasn't the same as high school. The Roscoe in high school wasn't the same as college, so right. on and so forth. So what moment 
what what was the transitions during the moments? And you can give the single most important, or you can give the transition from from middle school to high school to college to now. Okay. Well, the I give the most one that stand out the most to me that I feel like affected me the most. Uh, it was basically a little bit out of college. You know, I was in a relationship with somebody I thought. I love dearly, right? Or I thought they loved me. or I just felt like we had a great-ass relationship. Like, it was one of the best relationships I had been in from that point. I only been in, like, two or three up until then. But to make a long story, you know, short, she got pregnant. I found out the baby wasn't mine. In that moment, I was so emotional. I didn't know... I didn't know what to think during it during those times. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I felt even lost. So I didn't I didn't know whether to stay, leave. I didn't have nobody in my corner for real to like give me no no good advice. You know what I'm saying? Like just being a 22 year old, 23 year old dealing with that, it was rough, and it it made me hit rock bottom when I found out my baby wasn't my baby. And at that point, I knew I had to, because I only got there to that place because I was being a people pleaser. You know what I'm saying? I only got to that place because I didn't love myself like I should. It was it was things I seen that led up to that moment that I should have just went on dissing myself. I didn't because I didn't love myself. Um. Uh, well, first, I want you to put your mic this way, just lean it towards you right there. Yeah. But is it safe to say that, or my question is, is it is it safe to say that um, that is the, the source or the root of your nonchalant behavior, or is it something prior to that uh, that led to that? Well. Because, and the reason why, I'm, you always ask me, or you always tell me, mm -hmm. the reason why you don't show your emotion, because if you do show your emotion, uh, it's, it's going to be crazy. Shit going to get real. Yeah, you know, yeah. so. It's a, uh, my nonchalant is a defense mechanism. If I allow myself to so sometimes, like, I talk about this with you all the time. Like, I had, it take me, like, I had to process shit for, like, two to three weeks. I can't deal with that shit right then because I have so many. I be on an emotional roller coaster, like just trying to, you know, receive all this and trying to process all this. Like I just be on an emotional roller coaster, not really knowing, you know, what the hell I want to do. But so it, that's why it takes me long, so long to pro process it, and that's that is, you know, a, a part of my nonchalantness. So, and I want to backtrack to what you, the story you just told. Which of course I hear it, but a lot of people that's listening right now probably don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, it, because of that, and because of the moments, or because of that that shit that that fuck with you in that way, has your love for yourself grown stronger? Oh yeah, yeah, it had to, it had to, I had no choice because I couldn't continue. I couldn't. I can't continue being a people pleaser. It's dangerous. And I can remember you actually telling me about the moments you having us uh, what uh, self destructive behavior even yeah. in the moments after that. What was the root of that? Did you hate yourself? Did you what was? I, was, it? I felt so fucking disgusted with myself. Like I felt like very low. I was embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? Like my ego, pride. You know, just I felt I felt like nothing. Bro. I just remember, you know. Laying in the bed, just like, really, I wasn't, I, want, I don't want to say I was suicidal, but I didn't want to be here no more. It's like I just wanted to disappear, but I didn't want to hurt myself, but I just didn't want to be here at all. Because I felt like I just let myself down and a lot of people around me down. Okay, I guess, so now that you're here and that you, you're at the point that you're at now, um, do you have, are you in a place where you can um like forgive the people that you have issues with or is this or forgive the people that you you've been around or 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 love the fact that they are absent from your life or is this a space where you miss them and you want them around 
I just, uh, I don't, I don't think I miss them. I want them around. It's like, I'm, I guess I'm kind of glad that shit happened to me. All that shit happened to me. Because I, without that happening, I wouldn't be who I am today, if you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't have the same perspective. I wouldn't have the same love for people that I have today. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess my next question is, um, and it goes back to you living in your purpose. Um, what, as far as your purpose go, right? So, what is the... The, um, how has your day, your day to day, I mean, changed now that you're living in your purpose? Uh, and when when you answer this question, I want you to think about it from all dimensions, not just your schedule, but like your day to day. How has it changed since you started living in your purpose? I started living in my purpose. I make sure when it comes to myself. I make sure every, like when I'm thinking to myself, I make sure every thought is nice now. Not hard on myself. Like I used to talk down on myself, like you stupid, bro. You ain't going to get nowhere. Like, you know, you lazy. Like, but now I, I talk up, I talk myself up. You know, if, if I don't make it to the gym, like I feel bad. Like, oh, I gotta, yeah, we got to do better, school. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I don't, beat myself up like I used to. I'm always, my day to day, I'm just positive about everything. Like, even, you know, you know, I, I hit a deer in my car. And like, usually back in the day, I'd just be so pessimistic. Like, so, like, oh, ain't shit gonna work out. It's like, I don't care. This shit gonna work itself out. Like, everything's gonna be okay. It's like, I'm much more positive now in my day to day. I'm not pessimistic at all now. Uh, I guess with me, there's a fear, right? There's a fear that I might get back into that space and I'm afraid of it and I don't want that. Like every day is this looming feeling of what's going to happen today to make me want to be or make to bring me back into that space. Right. You know, cause I'm so happy right now with what we're doing. What will put me back in that space? Is that something that you have? And if so, how do you deal with it? Uh, Yeah. When I think about it, it'd be like, a tragedy or something happening, you know, like that, that, that be in the back of my head, like, damn, what if, you know, what if T died? What if, you know, Bria died? What if Kenny died? What if my mom and them, you know, I think about stuff like that sometimes. I, I do think that would put me in a, in a bad state. That would put me in a bad state. Sure. Uh, my last question is, what do you want the people listening to know about SCO? I want people to know that, uh, I feel like, well, I want people to know that I'm operating in my purpose now. I feel great. And uh, I want people to know, listen, like, fuck fear. Fear will have you disbelieving in yourself, just create so much doubt within your mind. Like, fuck fear. Listen, you got a dream. Go for it. And that's what I'm doing. I feel great now. What's next? What's up? What's next in the future for you? Man, I just you down thirty pounds. Yeah, I want to want to get to two hundred by two hundred two hundred fifteen pounds, and I just want to man live a life of abundance. You know, not even like tangible things, just like you know the intangible things, love. You know, I just want to live life to the fullest. Gotcha. Hey, man. The purpose of this was to get people to get a chance to know us a little better. And I think anybody watching this right now will get a better grasp on you. It's still more levels. And if you want to learn those levels, watch the rest of the fucking episodes if you're watching right now. <laughs> but the purpose of this was that we wanted to get the people who support us and fuck with us a chance to learn who we are and what we do and what we go through on a day to day. Because um, you see us on the screen, but you really don't know. So with all that being said, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for being real. Thank you for being raw and giving your time. Listen, this is the Chop by T podcast, Brown Table Edition. Until next time.